Good morning, everybody. And uh, I don't know about you, but I'm getting ready for the for the holiday weekend, another break, you know. <laughs> I've heard there's jellyfish on the beach, so I, that's what the news says. So um, I hope they're cleaning that up or managing to take care of that before the fireworks. But anyway, um, <clears throat> so I'm thinking up here in my upper room, and um, I got some things to say. I always don't always know what order to say them in, you know. <laughs> so I'm going to start with um, let others preach about you, so you don't, so you don't have to. You know, I've heard the old saying. I think it was about Hillary. <laughs> it says, "I read her book, so you, I, uh, I forget the guy from Arkansas. I read her book, so you don't have to." You know, so, but anyway, I think about that. Um, you know, we can't brag on ourselves, you know. Uh, Jesus didn't write in the Bible everything that he did. He didn't say, like, look at the, let me tell you about the miracle I did today, and let me tell you about what I did yesterday, you know. <laughs> but a lot of times people look at the Bible and they say, oh, you know, Paul, that was Paul's writing, and that was, a, no, you know. They were writing about Jesus. They were, and so I thought about, um, if y'all know who Joyce Meyer is, and a lot of people say, well, she's a woman. She shouldn't be preaching to men. But so many times she talks about her husband and what a great guy he is and how he's helped her along the way. And she didn't know what she'd do without him in life. And he's so opposite her because he's so stable and he loves the Lord and all this stuff. She preached. He's preaching. <laughs> he's preaching through her, you know. And so the Lord is, you know, but I'm just saying he doesn't have to get up there and say what a great guy he is, you know. He's... uh you know, he's being preached, you know, about him. So let others um, say what they will, you know, good or bad, but let others uh, defend you, you know, let others speak of you <laughs> and don't have to worry about yourself, you know. So um, anyway, and so another couple little other ditties is don't do something you know, won't always do. I have a tendency to have excessiveness, do, you know, th things in extreme. I don't know about you guys. But my friend Sharon, when we used to work together, we worked together 15 years, and she'd always say, you know, she would say things like, you're going to give me whiplash. <laughs> I would make, I would decide to do something, and whammo, I would just go do it, you know, and then stop and think about it sometimes. And and then the consequences would be, you know, right back at me, you know, and stuff. Anybody hear that? <laughs> so, and the other thing is, be kind when others are not. Right? That's always a good thing, you know. Sometimes when others are unkind, you want to just be unkind back, you know. Sort of a natural thing. Uh, fortunate for me, I'm not quick on my feet. <laughs> and then, like, the next day, I'll think of ten things I should have said. <laughs> but I think God placed that part as a good thing. It's a bad thing and sometimes because, you know, you can't think quickly. But on the other hand, it has saved me so many times. <laughs> so, And then you cannot please people. You can't. You can't be a people pleaser, you know. And especially if you're looking for something in return. You just can't do it, you know, because you will be disappointed. And I'm not saying bad things. It's just that, um, like I was thinking before, is that if you, if they only see you and your works and not what God wants. So if you just please God, you're going to please people, you know, because they're going to see God, not you, right? If you're out there struggling and they ask you something and you do it whether just because they ask, even though you don't want to, you don't think it's the right thing to do, whatever, you know. If it's not what God wanted you to do, it's not what God had for them either. So um, be careful. Got to know. Uh, follow the Lord, you know, get into scriptures. And I'm in my Sarah Young and it's got three good scriptures I'm going to read off real quick. And John 8, 3, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Some other little ditties. <laughs> you got to speak the truth. For it is God who works. And, you know, I talked about the other day, to be careful who you save because they're going to tell you the truth. <laughs> Sets you free, though, doesn't it? For it is God who works in you to will and act according to his good purpose, right? And then it says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You know, I love my Sarah Young book. It has some good scriptures. But then I get into the Bible, and I'm looking at Isaiah 56, which is way, way far away from the scriptures that she's given me. And it says, <clears throat> The sons of the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord to be his servants. Everyone who keeps from defiling the Sabbath and holds fast my covenant, even them I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. You know, he's speaking to... Um, it was always the Hebrews, you know, but the Lord, you know, 
eventually opened it up to the Gentiles. But back in the day, they were foreigners. They were not Hebrews. And they also had that opportunity to join in with the Hebrews, you know, and to serve the Hebrew God. And many of them did because they saw the works of, the, of you know, of their father. <laughs> the burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, meaning the church. My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations, meaning the church. The Lord God who gathers the outcasts of Israel says, yet I will gather to him others besides those who are gathered to him. So, you know, um, it's the church again, you know. Go find a church. Find a church that it, it may be. I have been to a point in my life years ago, because I've been in New Life since 1997, or 96, I think, 97. And a long time ago, but I remember uh, transitioning from the First Baptist Church downtown to this church and, you know, looking around and trying to find another church. And uh, the Lord was telling me to go to New Life, I believe, but it wasn't real clear yet. I still was. So I tried other churches and stuff. And boy, I'll tell you, you know, it, it, it's like you got to find a home. You got to figure out where to plant your feet. It's kind of, it's difficult, you know. I don't like it. I, you know, it's like when you're kind of homeless, you know. <laughs> transitioning is difficult but keep keep at it keep at it until you hear the voice of the lord and you know gather yourselves together find people that are like-minded with the lord you know and test the spirits because there's some churches out there that you know not don't have the heart of god you know they sound good they look good they may look like cathedrals you know it doesn't mean they got the heart of god so um and that's in everything you do you know always test the spirits and so um, find, plant your feet somewhere, you know. And so, um, one more quick thing that, uh, I think David, David Jeremiah the other day was talking about the millennium and, uh, I might talk about that another day, but you know, it's going to be a thousand years, like 10 generations of people that would live a hundred. But, um, uh, it's so many questions that we have, don't we? Yeah, I have so many questions. <laughs> you know, this is one of them. I might get into that another day, but I love you guys. Jesus loves you so much more. Stick with him. See you later. Bye.